was called from a federal prison. Literally, this prison is surrounded by marijuana farms. And the people who work here pass farms on a daily basis to get to work here. You know, I struggle with it every morning. I mean, I listen to the radio, I hear commercials about marijuana businesses. You know, every day I wake up and I go, how did this happen, you know? Why is this happening? As I'm sitting here fighting in a state where it's literally everywhere, but yet the government is still pursuing me and fighting me as if I was the only one doing it. I mean, it absolutely blows my mind. Colorado was the first state to legalize marijuana, and most voters don't seem to regret it. Anything less than an ounce, no longer illegal in Washington state. On Thursday, Oregon will become the next state to legalize recreational marijuana. California will become the eighth state. People's opinion on this issue have evolved. And I felt myself, like any other American, my position evolving over the years. Aaron Sandusky has been in federal prison for almost seven years for conspiracy to distribute cannabis. He's one of about 20,000 federal or state inmates serving time for an activity that's legal in 33 U.S. states and Washington, D.C. But there's a bill working its way through the Senate that might help people like Sandusky by expunging their records. And some advocates believe that President Trump may be close to granting clemency to some of these men and women, including Sandusky. I'm not pleading out. I have no intention of pleading out. I'm not concerned about that because I'm going to defend Uh, what I believe is right. If I have to go to jail for 20 years defending, uh, then so be it. A thousand marijuana plants and a couple of weapons seized in a raid today. This happening in Sacramento County. A Modesto Police Department narcotics team raided a marijuana grow operation. One of the reasons we are making these announcements today is to try to put to rest the notion that large marijuana businesses can shelter themselves under state law and operate without fear of federal enforcement. In 2011, the Obama administration carried out a series of federal raids on medical marijuana clinics in California, despite earlier assurances from the president and his attorney general that they wouldn't target operators who were legal under state law. Uh, What I'm not going to be doing is using Justice Department resources to try to circumvent the state laws on this issue. What the president said during the campaign, you'll be surprised to know, will be consistent with what we'll be doing here in law enforcement. Uh, (laughs) It's been hard. It's been really hard. I'm tired. I just want it to be over. He just wanted to find access for people that could really benefit from it. My dad died from a brain tumor, and I noticed a lot of uh, patients with cancer were gravitating towards that as an option for them to seek relief from radiation and treatment. This call is from a federal prison. So it uh, was something that was close to my heart. And it was a good option for a lot of patients. I thought, you know, this is something that, you know, I, I feel comfortable with. And, uh, you know, exploring. I got into it shortly after Obama said he was not going to use government resources. When Sandusky opened a marijuana dispensary in 2009, medical cannabis had been legal for 13 years in California. He located in the town of Upland, which is one of a handful of municipalities that was attempting to use the zoning code to keep the industry away. Sandusky alleges that in 2011, then-Mayor John Pormierski demanded a $20,000 bribe to allow him to continue operating. I was visited by one of the, the mayor's associates who said, well, you know, we can, we can take care of this issue, you just need to understand how things work around in the city. And they said it was a $20,000 fee for a tolling agreement. And apparently he wasn't the only business that he was trying to extort from, so there was quite a bit of corruption going on in that city at the time, which we found out later. Sandusky ended up cooperating with the FBI, which later arrested and charged Pomierski with bribery and extortion. After Pomierski was indicted, Upland continued the fight to force Sandusky to close his dispensary. So he sued in state court and won. But marijuana is still a Schedule I narcotic, and according to Sandusky, city officials retaliated by sending a formal request to the U.S. attorney to shut down his operations. On November 1, 2011, federal agents raided Sandusky's businesses. They took and cut all the plants down, took all the lights, cut out all the ballasts, took a lot of the equipment that was worth a value, and then all of the paperwork, our corporate paperwork, which we had here, Uh, our patient files they seized. The federal government charged him with six counts of drug trafficking. Sandusky's employees all took plea deals. His business partner testified against him in return for a lighter sentence. 
Sandusky declined a plea offer that would have turned him into an informant. Essentially what it is is I would work for them and I would never have to go to prison that I guess the more cases I create for them, the more time I work off. And I said, I said, that's crazy. I mean, I don't know anybody that you would be interested in and I don't associate with anybody that you would be interested in. And my attorney looked at me and said, well, you know, your marijuana business. I said, I'm not going to go set people up to, so these guys can take them down. These people are following state law. They're not operating out of compliance with the state law. I'm not going to do that to these people. I said, no, that's no deal. I'm not taking that. Sandusky's attorney was planning to argue entrapment on the grounds that the Obama administration had publicly stated that it wouldn't prosecute marijuana operators. The judge prohibited that line of defense, and Sandusky was convicted and sentenced to the mandatory minimum of 10 years in prison. During sentencing, Judge Percy Anderson accused him of having lost his way about what's right and what's wrong. You know, considering what has transpired since, and, you know, how my trial was conducted, I can't help but think that those are words that he says to make himself feel comfortable because they are meaningless to me. He has bad days and some better days. I wouldn't say any good days. He's still angry. He's still very, very angry, which is concerning because it's been a long time. I, I, I don't know if he's ever going to let it go. He just knows that it was wrong. Aaron, maybe more than anyone, should receive clemency because his case is so disturbing to me. Amy Pova did nine years in prison on a drug charge before receiving clemency from Bill Clinton in 2000. Now she runs the nonprofit Can Do Foundation, which seeks clemency for all nonviolent drug offenders. Sandusky is one of 22 pot prisoners that Can Do is working to help free. We are asking President Trump for his next act of mercy to be strictly for marijuana cases as a category. Corporations are making millions and, and even we're getting into the billions. It's almost like a human rights violation to punish people for marijuana offenses. Others on POVA's list include Patricia Albright, who started growing and selling medical marijuana after discovering that it helped her cancer-stricken son. And Luke Scarmazzo, who petitioned President Obama for clemency in 2015, but was denied. At its heart, America is a nation of second chances, and I believe these folks deserve their second chance. Obama pardoned almost 2,000 federal prisoners, but POVA says his legacy on cannabis is decidedly mixed. I started seeing some of the best people denied, and I started seeing some very questionable people being granted. We really needed to get more people out by the end of his administration, and what would he have to lose? I mean, he's leaving. And there were just so many good applicants that got crushed. Three years after Obama left the White House, Pova is feeling hopeful. I've been to the Trump White House four times. I was there for Jared Kushner's Prison Reform Summit. They seem to be very aware that having the Office of the Pardon Attorney within the clutches of the Department of Justice is a conflict of interest. What I like about President Trump is that he is an outsider and he seems to be the only president who has been willing to listen to those of us in the clemency space who are considered experts. Now, I currently have an application in for clemency with Trump's administration because he's expressed on a number of occasions that he's looking to assist those who are treated unfairly uh, by the Department of Justice, and I think my case clearly fits that mold. His name has been in front of the president's desk several times. So it feels like it's a little you know, more possible that it could happen. I am predicting that the cannabis people who are honest about this will see that he's the one that can get this done. Dana Rohrbacher is a former U.S. congressman, a marijuana legalization advocate, and a Trump supporter. He co-authored the 2014 Rohrbacher Far Amendment, which prohibits the federal government from expending resources to raid and prosecute anyone operating a marijuana-related business 
under state law. We Republicans claim to base our decisions on individual freedom, states' rights as mandated by the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution, and especially the doctor-patient relationship. Don't bother to use rhetoric about those principles on other issues if you vote for the federal government to supersede individual rights, states' rights, and the doctor-patient relationship when it comes to marijuana. According to Rohrbacher, under his law, Sandusky should be released immediately, though the courts don't see it that way. They should be let out of jail and they should be uh, given their freedom, clemency, and uh, and maybe even an apology. Sandusky is set for early release from prison this November, when he'll be transferred to a halfway house in California and then out on probation in early 2020. Even though Sandusky will be out soon, he knows he'll be facing consequences long after his release and continues to seek a court appeal overturning his sentence or a full pardon and expungement for operating a business within the bounds of California law. What are you planning on doing once you are out? Immediately filing bankruptcy. I don't know what after that. So many things are up in the air. I have five years of probation. I don't know what I'm going to be allowed to do. 